I've been involved for 15 years now with uh, the Women's Environmental Institute. So when I retired, I was able just to lean 150% into the work of the Institute. So uh, we've been around for about 15 years and we've been thinking about this North Circle project for about 10 years. Very early on, we, we sort of thought, well, this was crazy. We've been listening to Ken Meter, uh, looking for food in farm country, and it's so hard to find healthy food in farm country. So there's something not quite right. Could an institute like ours have a role in finding food in, in farm country, distributing that food, supporting small local farms, farms that are devoted to sustainable and organic agriculture, creating a regional system. We've heard a lot of talk uh, over the last day or two about local and regional as uh, the way that we have to go, as the way out. And so I think our project fits exactly into that, that kind of, of trajectory. So uh, I'll run through these slides. The idea, as I said, occurred to us um, uh, quite some time ago. We have uh, many small farms in our area. Our last count is about 50, right? Not all of them are, pro are producing food, but they're producing something. Uh, we're definitely dominated by commercial ag, uh, and there's very limited access to the products of these <coughs> smaller farms. Uh, starting with kind of an urban middle class idea of buying organic food does not fly. <laughs> in our area. There's a lot of bias, prejudice mm -hmm. against this notion of organic, namely that it's unaffordable, but also it's a city thing. Mm -hmm. right? So we came out to the area as city girls. We're, we're often called the we girls by people in the area. Um, and we really wanted to move our farm, our farm campus in a direction that met our mission of environmental food and and agricultural justice. So we were kind of stuck in trying to figure out what to do. Um, mostly when you find organic food in our area, in a grocery store, it has been flown in. Uh, it's uh, imported. So we're buying broccoli from, from China when we could grow it right there. So there's it's all, there are all these contradictions. Um, and um, also, we're in a very odd geographic location. We're not quite urban and we're not quite rural. So finding funding for a para-urban with just over 10,000 in population is difficult. Also, I think the models for the kind of system that we wanted to build are very city-centric, right? Uh, there are problems in rural areas that just are different. Uh, for example, transportation, right? When we deliver, we deliver to little towns. So getting people even to those sites in the towns are, are, are difficult. Um, so here we go. Uh, we decide to take it on. And so we applied for an NCR SARE grant. Uh, and we said our problem in 2017 was how to um, effectively increase rural consumption of organically and organic and sustainably grown produce from our local farmers. So you see what kind of regional system we're, we're trying to build. Um, many reasons to go online. It's kind of unusual, especially in a rural area, to get uh, folks to go online to order their food. But people were convinced it's going to be more convenient. Right? I can do it through three days a week that the market's open. All I have to do is find a computer. Of course, sometimes that's difficult in a rural area. Um, and the farmers loved it. All they had to do was farm. All right? And then we would pick it up and administer it, uh, uh, pack the boxes, and send it out. So um, we, when we applied for the SARE, we said we have four challenges here how to motivate an interest, how to create the internal motivation to buy this food, how to do better outreach through what we call community messengers, how to find the EBT SNAP consumers. So we, from the very beginning, we were able to do that, but finding folks was, was difficult. And then how to educate. Our urban communities are, to a certain extent, um, more uh, uh, educated around issues of food, so without seeming elitist, right? How do you go into a uh, rural area and, and uh, communicate that? 
we had a logo way back when. <laughs> the first thing we did 10 years ago was create a logo. We still didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> but we still use it, and I kind of like it. Um, so we were stuck with a development problem. We had to find growers. We had to find an online platform. We had to figure out how to market. We had to find eaters, consumers. Uh, we had to figure out how to do deliveries. And we had to do the administration, and we had almost no money. <laughs> so we're working with a budget that's very small compared to the nature of this project. We did find 20 farms. And it was, everybody was pretty excited about this because it would be supplemental income. We said, you know, just bring whatever extra you have. The online platform we use is Farmers Web out of uh, New York. Uh, we worked with the programmer a lot because it used to be a, a wholesale uh, platform. So he worked with us to create an individual order platform. Works very nicely because it reduces our, our administrative load a lot. Marketing, we're just not very good at it yet. <laughs> I'll say that's one place where we could use a lot more money. Uh, and our eaters, they began to show up. We have nine drop sites in little towns uh, around North Branch, Minnesota, uh, including the Stark Winery, which is my favorite delivery. <laughs> um, in fact, he even offered a free glass of wine for people who um, picked up at the Alma Winery. All the deliveries were volunteer. So we're cutting costs as much as we can to make this thing possible. Uh, this is what we look like in flyers. And I'll just take you on a brief excursion to our website. Uh-oh. <laughs> so uh -oh. we just switched the fire. We just, oh. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's, all right. that's, a preview. that's a preview of rents. There we go. Oh, here we go. Okay. drag it over. Oh, okay. Oh, so because it's not on that. I just. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. Yeah, but you, we can see it, but they can't. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, so. So drag it over to the. How many people does it take to? <laughs> Probably all the tabs are too. I don't know. No, that's not it. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, it is. <laughs> now, okay. I'm not sure how to answer it though. Okay. It's just the website. So, okay. so now you're just going okay. To so again. now we're just going to advance it. So uh, people go in, they can place their order there electronically. Snap EBT users, awesome. and then information on how it works, how to pick up your order. Uh, we generally kept the online system open Monday through Wednesday. Actually, it opened up Sunday night. Farmers had to get their availability list to our uh, social media person by 4 o'clock on Sunday. We posted everything out and stayed out until about 4 o'clock Wednesday. Uh, consumers uh, bought online using credit cards. If they're EBT SNAP, we had an offline procedure that we could use. Um, and then. Wednesday at 4, we call the farmers and we say, hey, you've sold this and this and this, and we need it tomorrow, right? And that was our agreement with the farmers. So they were more or less counting on certain crops, um, and um, the, it, it worked. These are our drop sites around the little town of North Branch. So you see we have a north circle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're hoping if this thing actually grows to go more into east central. Um, but we are very happy with the amount of work we have right now. <laughs> and then we always did our best to, to um, introduce the farmers. This is my farm, Amador Hill Farm, Beulah Land Farm, uh, Bone Lake uh, Apiary, um, our mushroom farmer, our flower and strawberry farmer, our hog farmers, um, cheese farmer, uh, vegetable farmer, heirloom uh, vegetable farmer, um, and uh, vegetable farmer, vegetable farmer, eggs and chickens, and then Rita, Rita did flowers, Sunnyside did squash, we have an extraordinary flour mill um, in uh, uh, North Branch uh, that um, also provided our our flour. Okay, so now we'll just put it down the, on the screen. Mm -hmm. Do it. Just like this. Mm -hmm. 
So part of what we're doing is, is um, yeah, like helping the consumer see the farmer. And we had we had a dinner where we invited the farmers and, and local community people to come to dinner. And it, it's really the case that people didn't know there were so many farmers around, right? Farmers didn't know that they would have this opportunity to talk to people who might want to buy their food. So it's a real hidden system that's crushing these small farms. And of course, like everywhere else, these small farms are going down by the minute, right? So one part of our work was to create some sort of safety net for uh, these farms. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> the power. <laughs> um, so uh, we visited our website. What are some of the results? Uh, I'm only showing you 2017-18 uh, because those, those were the two years of our grant. You can see we started out oh, really poorly in 2016. We thought, well, we'll start the North Circle Food Project and then we'll go to the North Branch Farmers Market and the customers will pick up from us there. That did not work, right? It really didn't work. So you'll see how um, with the coming of the um, online service from 216 to 218, a really enormous increase in, in purchasing power, right? Number of sales, we're still not large, right? But we're, we're growing. Unique customers, I think this is kind of interesting. These are people who buy once and never come back. We don't know why, but <laughs> that's the issue for this year. Um, so what this means is that the increase in our revenue was largely due to returning customers, right? And that's, we felt good about that. Um, so what we accomplished with uh, the NCR uh, SARE grant is the streamlining of the process it actually took a long time to figure out how to get step by step by step during the week so that we were efficient. Um, and then we streamlined connections between our institute with this one magical person uh, because we wanted to have just one person uh, sort of communicating with the farmers, picking up from the farmers or, or having the farmers deliver and then uh, collecting all of that produce and boxing it up. We found that person, right? Um, and then of course we had all the issues of protocol to work on. Um, what are the farming practices? If they're not certified, we had a farmer's oath that they had to take. Uh, do they have liability insurance? What are the food handling practices? We tried to monitor that as best we could. We also had traceability issues as we were worried. Uh, should something go wrong, right? Would, would there be one farm that we had to be really careful with? Quality control and then standardized quantities, how many in a bunch, <laughs> right? Or how big should the zucchini be? Um, so all of these things are just typical farmer's market things. This is our one superwoman who did the job. Um, and let me just say this, uh, the Women's Environmental Institute is a 501c3 Chisago County charity organization so when we fell short, we said, that's our charity work, right? Because we are helping build this community uh, and a food system in the community. Now, I hope that doesn't go on forever. <laughs> but certainly it helped us rationalize this, the first two years and even last year, we're still falling short. We need to triple our revenue to actually hit a sustainability level. And we're trying to figure out this year how to do it. We found an incredible software platform that I talked about that did so much of the administrative work that all we had to do was write checks for the farmers. Um, it was all done for us. Um, and we had to change the word food hub. Nobody liked that. Nobody understood what it was. Um, so we used online farmers market and then it became uh, a much more legible sort of, of project. Um, we tried to do as much meet your farmer. We had a meal meetings and so on. Uh, we developed a customer listserv. Uh, we worked at marketing and we secured, uh, got set up, uh, ship funding to help with uh, some of the advertising. Next year, we're, we're very headstrong with ship as we head out. Ship. Oh dear. Um, Just a it's a health, it's a, an organization that works on healthy eating and okay. reduction of, of diabetes and things like that. So. Um, actually, the woman that I'm going to co-partner with the project next year is 150% behind this, so 
um, we, we have a good shot. Here's another thing that we did. We created farmer storyboards. These are big pictures of the farmers, and we put them in the libraries, and we put them in the clinics, right? So, um, you know, that, that sort of gave a presence. We weren't there, uh, but nonetheless, people would come up to us and say, hey, I saw you in the library. <laughs> so, so it, it worked. So this is get your flu shot and go buy your food. <laughs> um, this is our list of what we're going to do this year. Uh, I don't think I have a lot of time to go through it. Um, but we certainly learned a lot from these first two years. We're working very hard now. We're visiting each and every farm right now. And that has been such a good experience because we're really getting the farmer perspective on what worked and what didn't work um, and um, what strategies we can use for this coming year. So <clears throat> I won't do that long list for you because it's probably more internal to us than external for you. Um, the main problem that we had was in outreach. Right? How to advertise this, how to get the word out. Because we had like four or five different towns, we were very strong in North Branch where we all live, right? But getting word out to Stark or to Tavis Falls or I see <coughs> right, the other local towns, very difficult to do. So this year we're looking for the community stakeholders, what we call people who have leadership roles in those communities and can help us get the information out plus probably joining all the chambers <laughs> and moving through the chambers. The other th good thing that has happened to us recently is um, we've been invited to deliver um, Veggie RX boxes. And yes, I am so excited about this project. We deliver to um, twice a month to Rush City. Rush City is a food desert. There's no grocery store at all. They have a quick trip. Um, and the clinic uh, prescribes these boxes. So, um, it, you know, as medicine, food is medicine. So we're very hopeful because this is actually the break that we need for a really larger market. And um, we, we think that day is coming, in fact, Monday. <laughs> we have a meeting. So um, that, that is exactly what we want to be doing, is getting food to folks who are food insecure, Right, maybe low income, right, and having the clinics and the medical profession uh, behind this move. So um, it solves some of the class issues that are still part of this project. Let me tell you what the class issues are. In our rural area, the the major oppression is class. Right, it's so white you can hardly you know <laughs> stand it. <laughs> But it's very white. So the, the issues have to do with disability, with age, with illness, with um, uh, certain incapacities, and certainly class, right? So imagine bringing an online food system to that area. It's, it's problematic, right? Um, we thought about going to libraries and running uh, small little tutorials on how to use the computer. Right? It's a possibility. But still, it's, it's, a, it's a class privilege to have that computer, right? So reaching out through the food shelves, we've started working through food shelves, and we're going to be advertising our EBT SNAP stuff through the food shelves. And um, that system becomes more accessible. Um, you know, it's sort of like, it's, there's also, I think, a different notion of local in rural areas. Uh, you can grow local, grow your own food, you can shoot local. We don't think about that in urban areas, right? Uh, but there are ways of getting local food that don't involve the system. But how can we support the small farms and how can we uh, get this food out to our community? Um, so this, the Veggie RX project, is really positioned just right for us um, in terms of what we want to be doing with our work and our mission. So um, just to recap this, our mission, the WI mission, is to grow resilience and community partnership for a livable planet. Uh, this is our uh, address going out to climate crisis. For a livable planet through environmental farming and food justice. And then the mission of North Circle is to grow healthy food and community together through a regional food system, 
for local small-scale farmers using organic and sustainable farming practices are supported by our local communities from market sales to emergency food systems. Um, it's kind of a long mission statement. <laughs> but it really fits exactly where our heart is in terms of the kind of justice work that, that we want to do. And uh, just as a footnote, WI was actually formed 15 years ago by a group of us um, activists from the 70s. Um, and we, we really wanted to know what are we going to do in the next two or three decades is probably all we have left. So at that time, the word environmental justice was, was coined and, and reaching currency um, in, in social activist circles. So we started out as an environmental justice organization in the city, and this has all been kind of organically unfolded um, uh, as we uh, were able to acquire this rural property by no money whatsoever. We just had friends uh, contribute certificates of deposit and um, then we acquired a bit of farmland. Um, basically, it's a, it's a land that's owned by a group of women, and we, we plan to entrust all that land to the Institute when we pass on, so we're looking for succession, <laughs> if anyone here is interested. Um, and um, so the, the origin at its heart has always been social activism, and now it's agriculture as so social activism that is at the heart of what we're trying to do. So that's the end of my presentation. We're going to continue this work um, and we have uh, actually the Institute has three different websites. The one that you're probably most interested in is northcircleonline.org. You should visit us. We open up in June and um, we happy to have you come out and visit the farm and uh, you know, if you're a farmer in our area, please do contact me. Thank you. Okay. Yes. How did you make the connections with the clinics to work with, like, the veggie RX? Did you meet? Um, well, this is this, uh, yeah, this woman who works for SHIP. Mm -hmm. She's also the retired mayor of North Branch, which means she has a lot of, of really good social connections. Mm -hmm. So she was able to pull this out of the hat, and they actually approached us and said, we need to do something about Rush City because those people have no fresh food. Um, so I think they, they were getting some boxes from Second Harvest, but it was largely processed, processed food. There's a very small, small, small food shelf up there run by a woman who runs a second-hand store to raise money for the food shelf. So it's a, it's a struggling population, and um, I love it, I have to tell you. I drive up on Monday morning with 15 boxes, and the nurses run out. <laughs> They're all so excited about these boxes, and they say, the clients are already here. And I'm usually late. You're late. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's so much more powerful for me than a CSA. Now, we run a CSA, but I'm beginning to feel like running a CSA to the Twin Cities is more like being a grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to work hard at building community with those people, because yes. they don't want to necessarily come out to our farm necessarily right but this is just very rewarding and it's hard to heart when we when we make those deliveries it's a lot of work because i'm growing greens all winter <laughs> yes so that's where the funding comes from the ship for that dude ship has given us money for advertising they won't pay any salaries okay. yeah so that's that's actually wonderful we have a couple thousand dollars to work with this year um but we I, the, the, the two women I'll be working with are very much local in their roots, so that will help us. Last year we slipped back. Um, the woman we hired had a full-time job, came up and did the work and then went home, and that didn't work for us. I mean, she was a brilliant social media person, but we sort of need that person who can say, hey, George, you know, what do you think about North Circle? And I think we'll have that next year. So it's this person we need who has great social media skills, knows the local connections, right? And then, then we can work it. Otherwise, we need more money, right? Um, so it's doable. I don't know if you can replicate it because it does a lot of work. Um, but it's, you know, if we can triple our income, we've reached a sustainability level where we could continue to, to do this work. 
Yeah. Have you defined your service area that you know will only do within a certain radius, or no. well, have, my, you, have you my, reached that point? My co-partner has very ambitious ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're we're fine if we can really localize some of these little towns this year. Mm -hmm. um, but um, she says, well, it should be for East Central. So and yeah, she wants a big brick and mortar thing. And it's like I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, this is this is doable. Right now, yes. Dave Kosky, we're talking about um, volunteer-driven, um, yeah. delivered sort of stuff. Yeah. Picked up or whatever. Does anybody pay for that, or do you take that cost out of what you're getting from the? Good point. Um, no. <laughs> no. We uh, the staff goes home, and the staff takes a number of boxes with them. Right. So um, right now we can't afford an extra delivery service. Right. Eventually we would. I mean, if we expand, we will have to hire a delivery person. But right now, so it's just the the farmers who are participating and no. taking the things home that it's are transferring them to the delivery sites. The farmers bring everything to our farm. Okay. We pack it almost instantaneously, all right? Because there's this very short window. We have no inventory risk involved. Right. It's just a short term turnaround. Um, and then uh, we, the staff at WI, there's a few of us. We basically just radiate out because people go home in different directions. <laughs> so that's all volunteer. I guess one could say it's on staff time. Yeah, we probably absorb that in the back. So do you have a processing facility at the farm that it gets delivered to, or was that something we that are the process, before? We are the we are the packing facility. The farmers bring in produce that's clean. Okay. If it's not clean, it, we don't put it in. Okay. Right? Uh, and we've talked to them about food handling procedures, we've talked to them about presentation. Oftentimes farms will put a little note on, you know, this is my farm and I hope you really enjoy this. Um, so we, we've been very lucky in the um, way in which farmers have worked with us right, in providing produce that's actually ready to go. So do you only work in produce? And you said you mentioned farmers that had meat and eggs. We have like we that. have meat meat as well. Okay. Meat comes in bone hard, frozen. Okay. And so they process it before it gets to you. Yes, okay. that's all done. All of that's done, and then we put it in the cooler. Cooler goes out. We call the customer. We say the, you have meat We're this on week. Our way to yeah. Okay. So you need to get there right away. Yes. Um, two questions. One is. Far, was it called Farmer Web? Farmer's Web, yes. Is that free to use or how? No, 75 a month. Okay. And then, we pay. and then what, off season we don't pay anything. Okay. And then the follow-up question, this is sort of like a big picture question, but yeah. I know you mentioned uh, that you need to triple your revenue to be yeah. sustainable. Do you think that food hubs are viable under capitalism? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good question because we, even though we're a non-profit, we still need a profit margin unless we become completely sacrificial in, in what we're doing. That's why we have this kind of charity flag that we can wave and not feel too bad about losing all that money. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the, the problem, problem is obviously price point. Farmers want a higher price point. <coughs> Consumers want a lower price point. We use basically sort of farmers market price points. Um, and then for EBT SNAP, we have also, also have a discount. So we're, we're trying to meet all those needs within a justice framework. Right. Is that friendly capitalism? I mean, I think maybe, maybe capitalism is the problem. But. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's another story. We can talk about that for four hours. <laughs> But yeah, no, we, okay. we, it's sort of like, uh, you know, what can we do now? Yeah. We've got hungry people, we've got farms going down out of sight, we've got young people who want to farm, mm -hmm. right? We have a lot of energy that's coming into local, 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 food by local, um, and we don't have a mechanism. So, so this is a pathway, mm -hmm. that's all I can say. And certainly, if we had a socialist system, it might be good. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, it's about ethics, and it's about creating a community of creating trust. A community of trust, yeah.